What's up guys, we're doing a huge giveaway. Starting next week, we'll be giving away random prizes in random TPS videos. It could be anything, gift cards, PlayStations, $500. I mean, hell, you might even get a new car, who knows? All you have to do is tune into TPS to find out. Again, it will be totally random which videos we'll be doing giveaways in and what the prizes will be. So tune in to find out. Then follow the directions we give you in those videos with the giveaway in order to qualify. Hopefully you'll be rolling away in a BMW. Good luck, TPSers. What's up guys, Roger Goodell took over as NFL commissioner in 2006 and it hasn't been pretty ever since. Under Goodell's tenure, the league has seen massive jumps in revenue and such. If you ask the owners, Goodell has done an A plus job and should be in the commissioner's chair for as long as he wants. But we, and you the viewers, are not NFL owners. And most of us can probably agree that Goodell has been in the commissioner's role long enough and that a change is necessary. If the NFL wants to retain its status as America's biggest and most popular sports league, they simply have to think about removing Goodell and finding a better option. I'm Jason Biondo, and today we present eight reasons why the NFL needs to fire Roger Goodell and find a new commissioner. Don't forget to leave your video ideas down below. We will be looking, and if we choose your idea, we will give you a shout out in the video, so comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe to TPS and put on your notifications, because we post videos every single day. Every day's a new video. Subscribe. <laughs> And a big shout out to Anthony Vlogs from Orlando for suggesting this video. Hey, I vlog too, man. That's dope. Follow my vlog, Jason Bianda. What's up? Number eight, relocation controversies. Now, Goodell could only do so much when both the St. Louis Rams and San Diego Chargers relocated to Los Angeles. The majority of NFL owners approved both relocations, but we just think Goodell could have handled this better. Let's be honest. The two relocations were disasters from the get-go. LA has struggled mightily in attracting fans and general interest. Seriously, every Rams or Chargers home game is filled with fans for the visiting club. The city of St. Louis was working on a project to get a new stadium for the Rams. The city of San Diego never really got its chance. The Spanos family just got up and left when they had the chance. And this was after years and years of promising to try and keep the team in San Diego. This all looks bad on the commissioner now. A new stadium is in the works for the Rams and the Chargers to share. But what if the city continues to struggle growing as a football market? Well then this is just going to be a giant waste of time and money. No matter how you feel about the relocations from St. Louis and San Diego, we can all agree that the NFL could have handled this better. Why does LA need two football teams? Over St. Louis and San Diego? It's embarrassing all around. So yeah, maybe a new commissioner would be able to handle future relocations a little bit better. And maybe he'd put the teams in better football markets. Number seven, bad relationship with the players. The relationship between league office and owners against the players has never been so sour and strained. Players want more guaranteed money. Some owners have gotten into trouble with the law, and some have made some hurtful comments about players, especially when it comes to race and politics. A lot of this falls on Goodell, who simply hasn't done much to improve the relationship with the players. If anything, the commissioner has only made things worse between himself and the men who step on the field every Sunday for his league. The face of the NFL, Tom Brady, certainly has a vendetta against Goodell for that ridiculous deflategate incident, which led to a four-game suspension. In April 2016, Drew Brees told Sports Illustrated illustrated that Goodell has too much power in regards to how he handled the whole deflategate thing. Pro Bowl cornerback Richard Sherman hasn't wasted any time expressing his feelings for Goodell. Sherman said Goodell is just a face, just a suit. Even though he's now retired, let's not forget James Harrison's strong words of hatred against Goodell. At the end of the day, some of the NFL's most prominent players have made it clear how much they dislike Goodell both as a person and a commissioner. The relationship between he and the players will only get worse over time, and it will only lead to more disastrous results. That is why the league needs to replace Goodell and find somebody who can show more support for the players while easing tensions with their owners. Number six, the cheating scandals. Goodell could not be blamed entirely for his handling of many of the cheating scandals that have hurt the NFL's image. But he's obviously not enforcing the rules enough. And he certainly hasn't done a good enough job disciplining the rule breakers. The 2007 New England Patriots Spygate controversy became an embarrassment for the league. The NFL's golden franchise was caught illegally videotaping the New York Jets' sideline signals during a 2007 game. That led to reports that the Patriots had been doing it for years, and that Goodell had protected the Patriots up to that point. It's been suggested that Goodell smashed many Spygate tapes, including ones that dated back to Super Bowl 36 against the St. Louis Rams. At any rate, Goodell didn't really punish the Patriots. A six-figure fine and forfeiting draft picks. Big deal. The deflate gate and bounty gate controversies are impossible to ignore as well, and you can easily argue that he punished the wrong people in both incidents. Then you have stories of teams pumping 
extra crowd noise in through the speakers. It just seems like many teams are trying to cheat until Goodell catches them, because he clearly isn't the best at sniffing out the slimy stuff that goes on under his nose. A better NFL commissioner would be enforcing rules, stay more authoritative, and handle the whole punishment thing better. Goodell continues to display that he's just not cut out for putting an end to the cheating scandals, and that he's not able to deal with the disciplinary stuff properly. That's why the NFL needs a new commissioner. Number five, decline in TV ratings. Television ratings for the NFL moved up 5% for the 2018 season. But in previous years, the TV ratings had dropped by a wide margin. And it's easy to believe that the trend will return in the near future. Keep in mind that ratings were down considerably for 2016 and 17. Why? Because people are still going to boycott the NFL. The political sagas, the off the field incidents involving players, and the NFL's ignorance of CTE studies and data gives fans good reason to do something else on Sundays. Like watch Game of Thrones. Oh, it's over. No, oh, damn. Goodell hasn't been able to step in and address the issues that have caused people to stop watching football. Fair or unfair, the decline in TV ratings falls on the boss because he hasn't done his job in giving everyone a reason to devote their Sundays to football. He seems to play the I don't care card when it comes to TV ratings. Ditto for the owners. But guess what? Ignoring the public outcry and backlash is only going to lead to lower and lower TV ratings. If that ends up being the case in 2019 and 2020, what will it take for the league to finally bring in a new commissioner? Ratings and money are everything in the NFL. And with viewership dropping significantly in recent years, it's becoming more evident that Goodell has been in charge for far too long now. Number four, the PR nightmares and backlash. Ask any NFL fan and writer, and many of them will tell you that they don't know why they watch football. It's something we've been drawn to for far too long, and it's hard to let go. But deep down, many of us know we shouldn't be supporting this league anymore. And you can't blame the league's owners and Goodell for that. Why? Because they don't take action and only bring the PR backlash and nightmares upon themselves. Things got so out of control in the hashtag take a knee movement that the league had to enforce a rule that outlined all players must stand during the national anthem or stay in the locker room. Much of the NFL PA's dismay. All of these players are being punished for minor offenses, while guys who commit the most heinous of acts always get a slap in the wrist. You have some league owners making racist comments, getting arrested for cases such as DUI and soliciting prostitution. And these are the most powerful men in the NFL? What kind of example is that setting? In short, Goodell just keeps on botching his chances to repair the NFL and its image by letting all of these incidents get out of hand. Again, he just doesn't seem to care. Or he seems to think all of these situations are helpless. Or he's just trying to ignore it until like something happens and dude, something's happening. Change it. Help yourself, Roger. Help the owners get with the real times. Help the NFL. Repair its image for crying out loud. Try, at least. I don't know. We've given him a lot of chances to do that, and the NFL just keeps getting worse and worse in terms of both image and reputation. So yeah, it's time for a new commissioner already. Number three, he's been in long enough. For all major North American sports, it's quite rare to see a commissioner change. Rob Manfred and Adam Silver only got their gigs once the other guys retired. Goodell became the NFL's commissioner in 2006, taking over for the last one who had served since 1989. Things have changed a plenty over Goodell's tenure as NFL commissioner, and his old school philosophies just don't line up with today's. He has the owner's mentality and refuses to adapt, especially with the changing social times. Goodell has spent nearly a decade and a half as commissioner. There have been goods and bads, but the bad obviously outweighs the good for him. A decline in ratings, cheating scandals, too many horrible off the field incidents, it goes on and on. The NFL needs a younger person to take over. One who will come to realize that abusing women and children is far more severe than smoking marijuana, and that players have as many constitutional rights as the league's owners. All in all, Roger has been doing this for a while now. Sometimes you just have enough of something and it becomes time for a change. It feels like that's the case for Goodell. He served this time, but all things must come to an end, including Roger's tenure as the NFL commissioner. Number two, ignoring CTE and concussion issues. A study revealed that 110 out of 111 NFL players whose brains were analyzed had shown signs of CTE, which is downright horrifying and tragic. And how did the NFL commissioner respond to that? By spilling a series of lies. Goodell claimed that the average NFL NFL player lives five years longer than you. Except that studies have suggested that football players' life expectancy has been reported to be between about 52 and 59 years of age. Former NFLer Brett Favre, before his 50th birthday, admitted that he experienced memory loss and fears he may have CTE. NFL owners like Jerry Jones had disputed the link to CTE in football. The fact that the league doesn't take CTE studies seriously is absolutely
absolutely shameful. And not only that, but the NFL hasn't done much to try and reduce concussions for players. They haven't enforced enough safety rule changes. Trying to reduce kickoff returns isn't good enough. New helmet designs would help. And so would adding rules and suspensions or fines that strictly forbid players from hitting others in the head. The NFL needs to take the CTE results more seriously. And they have to get to work in protecting their players of the present and the future. But Cadell and the league owners are way behind on this. And it's why a new commissioner is necessary. Because it's quite obvious that the current commissioner isn't very worried about CTE and concussion problems. Number one, lack of proper discipline and action. Ray Rice got a two game suspension for viciously assaulting his fiance and dragging her unconscious body across the floor. Tom Brady got a four game suspension for possibly telling Patriot staffers to deflate footballs. Vontez Perfect is allowed to play football despite numerous suspensions and fines, ranging from headhunting to violating the league's wellness policy. Josh Gordon missed most of 2014, plus all of 2015 and 16, mainly for smoking marijuana. Le'Veon Bell received a multi-game suspension for smoking weed. Goodell has failed miserably when it comes to the disciplinary part of his job. How on earth can players get nothing more than minor suspensions for abusing women and children, when really they deserve to be suspended for at least a year, and maybe for life? Goodell's handling of suspension is a huge reason reason why ratings have gone down. His inability to fairly punish players for the worst off the field actions is an issue. Mainly because it lets players know that they can keep playing football no matter what kind of human being they are. Wouldn't it be better to enforce a one, two, or three strike rule and then you're out? For crying out loud, domestic abuse does not belong in football. But Goodell and the owners have allowed it. And it's time for the NFL to bring on somebody who will punish people for the worst of crimes. It's that simple. He's failed in a disciplinary role. And it's long overdue for someone to replace Goodell. Simple as that. Why else does the NFL need to replace Roger Goodell? Join me in the comment section below. Make sure to follow myself and TPS on social media. We post great content all the time. All the time. Great content right here. Right here. Do it. Go follow. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. I post videos every single week. If you want more of me, you should go there. Make sure to subscribe to TPS because we post videos every single day. Every day is a new video. Subscribe. Make sure to like this video if you liked it because why would you not? Go for it. Of course, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jason Biondo. I'll see you next time. My knee.